to my YouTube channel. So this is a new series on the side that I'm starting um, to basically discuss all the system design concepts. Um, I have been in this industry for seven years now and I see a lot of students um, commenting to make some series that would help them um, with the interview preparation. Now I am also not an expert, like I am also learning along with you guys but would love to share all the knowledge that I have received in this time period. So in today's topic, I am going to talk about Bloom filters. Um, Bloom filters is basically a probabilistic data structure where uh, we basically use probability um, to calculate something. So imagine we have a hash map and uh, we basically have some input data coming in. Now, when we get an input data, we basically hash that input data um, and then we pick the index. Let's say um, I want to hash my name, Kavit. So let's say the hash function outputs a number saying two. So I would basically go to the address space two and there I would set a bit saying one or maybe set the key or set the value saying Kavit. So next time uh, when I um, send another request with Kavit, um, it can basically check that, okay, what was the hash of Kavit? Okay, it was two and was, is two in the list or not? So if two is in the list, then that means, okay, Kavit already was here before as well. So similarly, today we'll look at a very, um, you know, a real time application um, of Bloom filters. So all of us do use Google Chrome, right? Now in Google Chrome, um, we might have come across that if we go to some particular URL, sometimes it gives us a warning or some message saying, hey, this URL might be dangerous or this URL doesn't seem correct or a valid one. Are you sure you want to continue to move here? The reason how Google Chrome solves it is using Bloom filters, right? So we will look into uh, how it works on a very small scale, but obviously Bloom filters allows Google Chrome to scale it to the level on which Google Chrome can detect, like there are millions and billions of URLs now. So the way efficiently Google Chrome detects is by using Bloom filters, right? So let's go over the basic concept of Bloom filters. So let's say I will create in our case, um, I will create a hash map. Let's say I will take a hash map of um, 10 uh, places. So it will be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, right? So what we will do here is um, we have basically 10 spaces, right? Uh, 10 bits, think of it like a bit vector. So it, this is a bit vector. And we have three function hash functions. Let's say we have hash function A, hash function B, and hash function C right all of these hash functions take in some value and obviously they will give different outputs and just for the simplicity we will consider that they their output is somewhere between 0 to 9 right so they will give out a number which is 0 to between between 0 to 9 now i have a url let's say i have a url um, www dot um, um i can name it web zero.com so this is a url and www.web1.com so the first time when one of these urls arrive when i pass them to uh, all the three hash functions let's say i pass the first url to hash function a it gave me value zero so what i do here if I pass it to hash function A, it give me value zero. So I set bit at zero to one. Now I pass hash function B 
so it gave me value 2 so I set it to 1 here and this one gave me a value of 4 uh, by passing it to hash function C so I set the bit at position 4 to 1 so this happens let's say Google Chrome was launched for the first time and Google Chrome didn't know anything about any URL this is these are one of the initial URLs right so right now what I'm trying to do here is um, I'm trying to see that okay the first time the web URL web 0 URL visited um, Google Chrome so I am setting these values uh, by passing to three hash functions ABC and I set the value at those places to one similarly I would do for web one let's say I pass it to hash function a it gives me again it gives me four so four is already set I will set it again now we will see the magic that okay you guys will think that there is a collisioning happening like okay they have more web URLs but we'll see the magic later on when we come to the next part but let's complete this let's say I pass it to hash function B I get the value at 7 as 1 and then I pass it to hash function C I set the value at 8 right now what we see here is that this block that I have marked with red um, it's actually very less thick yeah th this one so this is one because um, two values are setting it to one which is fine which is fine uh, we'll see how it will work now what happened what has happened here is uh, we get all the values set when we pass it to um, all the three hash functions so let's say these these this was the first time web 0 and web 1 um, had visited um, uh, Google Chrome now I as a user I report this URL so I will report this URL web 0 as being a threat so now this has been reported as a threat now in future what happens is now this was the first time let's say now next time I visit this thing again so let me create this bloom filter here right or let me actually create it little bit down so I can create it here now here what happens is yeah um, let me create all the places again so it will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Right. Uh, correct. Now, as I said that I already had marked web 0 as one of the threat URLs. Now, let's say they uh, another user tries to... Now, obviously, these are the values that were set. So it was 0. Um, 2 was set, uh, we had 4, we had 7 and we had 8, correct. Now a user visits web0.com and the other user visits web3.com let's say, right. Now as I said, if I pass it to ABC, um, what, what values it will give? Because with hash functions, we know that no no matter how many times if we pass the same input we are sure that the output that we will get is going to be same it's not going to change so let's say i pass it a here i pass it b here i pass it c now obviously these are the values that i will get let's say for web 3 i get again i get when if i pass a i get that okay it goes to index 4 but because i am using three hash functions the probability of getting that if I pass B and C also and though that will give me the same index which have one bit set is rare that's why we call it as a probabilistic um, data structure so let's say if I pass B I get index 0 right and if I pass uh, C I get index 8 now what has happened here is we see that this index that we got let me increase the thickness this index that we got uh, for web 3 is actually not set so we are sure that web 3 till now actually uh, is safe we don't know anything about it but because web 0 was already a threat it was already said as a threat because the first time uh, we, we said that okay it's a threat and 
these were the values that it set. So now for uh, web zero, we saw all the three, uh, oops, uh, we saw all the three uh, fields being set to one. So we know that, okay, web three was already visited before and in this bit vector, I'm on, on only storing uh, those URLs which are a threat. So I know that web zero is for sure a threat but because web3 is one of the hash function couldn't find any set bit i am pretty sure that web3 for now is safe and i can then uh, make the user uh, go to that url now the one thing that happens with bloom filters is there are a lot of chances of false positives meaning that there is a high chance that um, this might this might uh, um, this might actually come in the uh, like like let's say web 3s hash b uh, hash function b had given me index 7 right so in that case i would have said okay it's also a threat and i see all the bits set for this url also let's not get the user to go to this url but there is very less chances of it being a false negative because um, the false negatives will never happen in this case because one of these has function will actually give can give me uh, a right answer because in this case what has happened let's say ha hash function b gave me one uh, bit which was not set so i am pretty sure about the negative part so it gave me in a way it gave me a negative result right that it was not present that's that's i'm considering it as negative so in that case i am sure that this url is never yet seen till now and it's not a threat but false positive can happen at the same time false negatives are very less to ha uh, can never happen actually in bloom filters so this is one of the basic applications of bloom filters now you see that i'm storing it in a bit vector right so then the space which bit vector will take is considerably less than if i had to store let's say i had to store a string like if i store a string in a set like for every threat or every um, a bad URL, I'm storing it as a string in the set or in the database, how much memory it will take and how much time it could take to, you know, even scan through it. Like I have to do, let's say uh, there is a very big URL and because for string matching, I have to go over character by character. So first search it from the database and then go character by character, it would have taken a lot of time. So with bit vector, on bloom filters it has become efficient and it is scalable right so yeah this was a small concept on bloom filter data, data structure i will try to make a video every week on one of the system design concepts if you guys like my video uh, subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up and follow me on instagram thanks for the support